V. I. Lenin. To the comrades communists of Azerbaijan, Georgia, Armenia, Dagestan, and the Mountaineer Republic, see footnote 1. Written, April 14, 1921. First published, Pravda Gruzii No. 55, May 8, 1921, published according to the newspaper text. Source, Lenin's Collected Works, First English Edition, Progress Publishers, Moscow, 1965, Volume 32, pages 316 to 318. I send my warmest greetings to the Soviet republics of the Caucasus, and should like to express the hope that their close alliance will serve as a model of national peace, unprecedented under the bourgeoisie and impossible under the capitalist system. But important as national peace among the workers and peasants of the Caucasian nationalities is, the maintenance and development of the Soviet power, as the transition to socialism, are even more important. The task is difficult, but fully feasible. The most important thing for its successful fulfillment is that the communists of the Transcaucasus should be fully alive to the singularity of their position, and of the position of their republics, as distinct from the position and conditions of the RSFSR, that they should appreciate the need to refrain from copying our tactics, but thoughtfully vary them in adaptation to the differing concrete conditions. The Soviet Republic or Russia had no outside political or military assistance. On the contrary, for years and years it fought the Entente military invasions and blockade. The Soviet republics of the Caucasus have had political and some military assistance from the RS, FSR. This alone has made a vast difference. Second, there is now no cause to fear any Entente invasion or military assistance to the Georgian, Azerbaijan, Armenian, Dagestan and Mountaineer White Guards. The Entente burnt their fingers in Russia and that will probably compel them to be more cautious for some time. Third, the Caucasian republics have an even more pronounced peasant character than Russia. Fourth, Russia has been, and to a considerable extent still is, economically isolated from the advanced capitalist countries. The Caucasus is in a position to start trading and living together with the capitalist West sooner and with greater ease. These are not all the differences, but they are sufficient to demonstrate the need for different tactics. You will need to practice more moderation and caution, and show more readiness to make concessions to the petty bourgeoisie, the intelligentsia, and particularly the peasantry. You must make the swiftest, most intense and all possible economic use of the capitalist West through a policy of concessions and trade. Oil, manganese, coal, teak Varkeli mines, and copper are some of your immense mineral resources. You have every possibility to develop an extensive policy of concessions and trade with foreign countries. This must be done on a wide scale, with firmness, skill and circumspection, and it must be utilized to the utmost for improving the condition of the workers and peasants, and for enlisting the intelligentsia in the work of economic construction. Through trade with Italy, America and other countries, you must exert every effort to develop the productive forces of your rich land, your water resources and irrigation which is especially important as a means of advancing agriculture and livestock farming. What the republics of the Caucasus can and must do, as distinct from the R, SFSR, is to effect a slower, more cautious and more systematic transition to socialism. That is what you must understand, and what you must be able to carry out, as distinct from our own tactics. We fought to make the first breach in the wall of world capitalism. The breach has been made. We have maintained our positions in a fierce and superhuman war against the whites, the socialist revolutionaries and the Mensheviks, who were supported by the Entente countries, their blockade and military assistance. You, comrades communists of the Caucasus, have no need to force a breach. You must take advantage of the favorable international situation in 1921, and learn to build the new with greater caution and more method. In 1921, Europe and the world are not what they were in 1917 and 1918. Do not copy our tactics, but analyze the reasons for their peculiar features, the conditions that gave rise to them, and their results, go beyond the letter, and apply the spirit, 
the essence and the lessons of the 1917-21 experience. You must make trade with the capitalist countries your economic foundation right away. The cost should be no object even if it means letting them have tens of millions worth of valuable minerals. You must make immediate efforts to improve the condition of the peasants and start on extensive electrification and irrigation projects. What you need most is irrigation, for more than anything else it will revive the area and regenerate it, bury the past and make the transition to socialism more certain. I hope you will pardon my slipshod style, one have had to write the letter at very short notice, so as to send it along with Comrade Myaznikov. Once again I send my best greetings and wishes to the workers and peasants of the Soviet republics of the Caucasus. N. Lenin. Moscow, April 14, 1921. End Notes 1. Mountaineer Republic. The full name, Gorskia Avtonomnaya Sovetskaya Socialistikeskia Respublika, Autonomous Socialist Soviet Mountaineer Republic, founded in January 1921 as a Republic of the Chechen, Ingsa, North Ossetian, Kabardine, Bakar, Karachai and Sherkes peoples. At the end of 1922 autonomous districts, Oblasti, were formed. In 1924 the Mountaineer Republic was dissolved, but the autonomous districts survived. 